Hi, my name is Shelley Drake Cox, and I recently gave a conference paper at the Asian Studies Development Program Annual Conference in San Diego. And I'd like to reproduce that paper for you today. So let me share my screen. So this presentation will be discussing a Chinese painter's philosophy of painting. The Chinese painter's name is Shi Tao, and his philosophy is called the one stroke. So Shi Tao lived during the Qing Dynasty. Uh, this is, uh, he was born during the transition between the Ming and the Qing Dynasty. So he lived around uh, 1700. And this painting is one of his most famous paintings. Uh, the late art historian James Cahill called it everyone's favorite Chinese painting. And I'm starting with this painting because of this very vivid, expressive ink brushstroke defining the jagged edges of the cliff. And this can be um, an introduction to this, this philosophical concept that Shirtao talked about uh, called the one stroke. And besides this brushstroke, we also see an example here of Shirtao's dotting technique, these pale pink and blue dots that add mystery to this landscape. And most of Shirtao's paintings also have a scholar figure in the landscape, a sort of a self-reference to the artist himself, but also an observer figure it, that allows us to imagine ourselves in the landscape. So let's go deeper into this concept called the one stroke. And he articulated this concept in his treatise called Hua Yu Lu, uh, Recorded Remarks on Painting. And there are various translations of this in English. I've used Richard Strasberg's 1989 translation. Uh, and in his book, he has both the Chinese text and his translation. And I encourage everyone who is interested to read the uh, text of the Hua Yu Lu. It's not that long. It's, it's, a really, it's really beautifully written. So a key concept defining the one stroke philosophy. With one brushstroke, the painter creates fusion with nature, or you could say a cosmic atmosphere. It's hard to translate, but it, um, the uh, Chinese text talks about yin yun, this, this uh, concept which originated in the ancient book of changes, the I Ching. And so fusion and cosmic atmosphere are two different translations for the same term. So let's also look more deeply into this idea of the one stroke. It really can have three different meanings. Uh, the first here, uh, one stroke, it's, it's a beginning. It's the beginning of the painting. It's when the, the uh, ink uh, on the brush, the, uh, the painter's hand first touches the paper. It's activating the creative forces. It's also considered a kind of primordial stroke, something that is rooted in the very ancient past that is fundamental to human civilization. Uh, you might say it's like the basis of truth. And then thirdly, it is a kind of designing stroke. You know, a Chinese painter paints from memory 
and has the plan already in their head as they begin painting. But of course, there's some improvisation as they go along. But the first stroke in Schertau's concept really is the seed for the entire artwork. And another key sentence in the Hua Yu Lu, it only depends on the artist to take control. For if they employ the one stroke to create a universe in miniature, then their brush will clearly reveal their intention. So here is a self-portrait of Shertao, age 33, from the National Palace Museum in, in Taipei. So he has a really interesting life story. He was of royal Ming dynasty descent, but uh, his, his father, his whole family uh, was wiped out when he was four years old and a household servant saved him and took him into the mountains to live at a, a Chan Buddhist monastery. And he would continue to live in the monasteries and, and he was a, a monk himself until the age of 54, when he announced that he would no longer live as a monk and that he was in fact uh, a professional painter. So Schertau's one stroke theory, many people have emphasized that it grows out of his life experience of, as a, a Buddhist. Uh, and certainly that is true. But it is also larger than that. Uh, it, it really seems to have a lot of connection with Taoist philosophy and even some parts of Confucianism. And in general, Schertau asserts that painting is not just an art form, it's not just a leisure activity, it's actually uh, the penultimate way to seek enlightenment. So he says it's not at all a trivial, uh, a trivial uh, path. So here are some famous quotations from his uh, remarks on painting. He says, I apply the ink. The ink is not applied on its own. The brush is controlled by me, not by itself. The whiskers and eyebrows of the ancients cannot grow on my face, nor can my body contain their entrails. I express my own entrails and display my own whiskers and eyebrows. So you can see why Schertau is, is seen as a, a, a very strong individualist in the Chinese tradition that had so much emphasized painting based on uh, one's teacher or uh, in the style of an ancient master. Uh, Schertau's really asserting that he is an original. So this painting is very interesting because the scholars Marilyn Fu and Wen Fang point to it as a really good example of the one stroke in practice. So uh, Shi Tao uh, painted this bamboo plant uh, beginning on the side of the painting, uh, you know, uh, creating this this uh, very elegant branch uh, out to the leaves and then the leaves pointing to his inscription, uh, which in the calligraphy of the inscription is in a running cursive style of script that is really known for its speed of execution. It's um, identified with uh, an ancient calligrapher named Wang Xianzhi uh, called the one brush calligraphy style. So again, even the calligraphy style gives a sense of something uh, kind of fluid and, and flowing and, and uh, spontaneous. So here is the poem that Shirtau, Shirtau inscribed on this painting. Ruined leaves, sparse branches. It's best to paint them from life. Draw some high, some low, as if they are thinking and feeling. One need only face bamboo alone drink away for 10 years, then turn round the brush to give the roots in the thicket their own swishing sound. So note that the, the brush itself is making this, this sound of nature. And look at the last K 
character on the inscription, the one with the very long tail. That's the character that means sound. And uh, it looks almost like the brush itself, doesn't it? It's got those, the feathery ends of the brush. So, so he really ends this performance of ink with a great flourish. Now, Shertau is also known for the plum blossom. Uh, this was um, a, a, a flower that meant a lot to him. Uh, the plum blossom is known as the earliest flower to blossom, even before uh, the cold season is over. Uh, the plum is early to blossom and can thrive in those cold temperatures. And this is that what he's pictured here is not a plum cultivated in a garden. This is a wild plum uh, hidden in the mountains, perhaps. And we can't see the roots of these plums. And, and often uh, Chinese scholars who, who, uh, who felt uh, deserted or abandoned in their uh, political context would, would uh, paint the plum blossom without roots. So this is what Shertau has done here. And he's made these plum blossoms feel like calligraphy, you know, with these very graceful uh, shapes, the, the bent over uh, plum blossoms that, that are in the shape of arches with a few gingerly standing up. And here is a detail of a hand scroll from the Seattle Art Museum. And it really showcases his dotting technique. And in the uh, Huayu Lu, the, the treatise I mentioned, Shertau said that um, the one stroke can spiritualize mountains. So this, the uh, dots here just really um, give you that feeling of a, a, of a dreamy kind of uh, 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 dreamy location. And we see the, the small scholar looking up and admiring uh, this, this animated mountaintop. And Shertau could achieve the one stroke even with empty space. And uh, perhaps this painting is a, one of the best examples to see this idea of cosmic atmosphere. So if we start at the top of the landscape, we see the mist around the mountain peaks. And as you go down, it merges with uh, this, this uh, river. And the river flows down to the bottom of the painting and actually flows through and under the bridge where these two friends, uh, these two scholars are having a conversation. And behind them is a hut where the friends are staying. And it's filled with this same kind of luminous mist, this, this cosmic energy. And Shertau was so versatile, he could also do wonderful paintings of figures. So here he has painted Tao Yuan Ming, an ancient poet whom he admired and who had, had also lived a hermit's life and was known for his love of chrysanthemums. So Shertau has inscribed on this painting his own poem that has the, the, uh, the spirit of, of Tao's poetry. It reads, picking chrysanthemums by the eastern hedge, fond of a fistful of crisp fragrance, person and place both forgotten, to whom can I confide these words? So the poet is so enamored by this fragrance that he has forgotten his circumstances, his difficulties. And he's looking out at something. Uh, we're, look at, we're left to use our imagination, what he's looking at. And in his inscription, he anticipates that uh, the viewers will open their heart to him, you know, give him someone to confide in. And this charming landscape is from a series of 12 leaves in the Metropolitan Museum. It's called the Returning Home Series. So we see the scholar moving through the water at great speed. The strings of his hat 
are flying in the breeze. And even though the inscription uh, expresses loneliness, you know, this sense of uh, dislocation, but the image itself is exhilarating. Uh, and um, I really feel this visualizes this idea of the Tao, you know, the, the enlightened path. Uh, and the contemporary scholar Livia Cohn, a specialist on Taoism, has said that the Tao can be felt in the rhythms of the world. So this great mystery, this, these sort of cosmic forces can be felt in the, the flow of nature. So here I'm shifting gears and I want to show the relevance of Schertau's theory of the one stroke for our appreciation of contemporary Asian art. So both artists I'll discuss Here's South Korean artist Li Yu Fan, and then in a minute, uh, the Chinese artist Wang Hui Ching. Both of them were trained in ink and brush painting in their formative years, and influences from that training spill over into their work in other media. Now, I'm not arguing that Shertau's one stroke is something that they necessarily consciously subscribe to in their art practice. Rather, I want to show you that both artists infuse lines and dots with a spiritual importance in a way that resonates with Schertau's one-stroke theory. For example, the title of Li Yufan's 2011 retrospective exhibition at the Guggenheim Museum called Marking Infinity credits the artist's mark with the metaphysical power to usher in an encounter with infinity. So Li Yufan rose to prominence in Tokyo during the late 1960s as the theorist behind a movement called Mano Ha, which means school of things. And he has said that rocks in his work become like brush marks placed in dynamic interplay with the surrounding space. So as in Schertau's one stroke, we see a clear beginning and end to this brushwork. When the artist dropped the rock and produced the impact, cracked lines instantly formed and spread until they reached the edge of the glass plate. So all these decades later, we still replay in our head the impact of that boulder that consequential act of setting the encounter in motion. So in this work on paper from 1977, Li Yufan uses a brush to spread blue pigment in 34 vertical strokes from top to bottom of the paper, each one completed in a single breath. When his chest is full of air, so is his brush loaded with paint. And as he exhaled the air, the paint became more and more sparse until it vanished. And then the slow breathing began again at the top of the paper. So this breathing and brushing has a spiritual purpose. Lee wants to use art to refresh people living in cities. And Lee says, I hope to cut into the controlled everyday reality of industrial society, breathing fresh air into it and stimulating an awareness of infinity. So here is a more recent work from 2017, consisting of two very thick luminous brushstrokes in orange and blue acrylic, overlapping in the middle in dialogue, the title of the work. We might think of the two friends conversing on the bridge we saw earlier, the Chertau painting. So Lee says, although what I do is just a few strokes or lines, looking at the work can provide moments when people can experience something outside normal life. And here is another of his assemblages of plain objects two rocks, two metal rods, one pair the artists positioned touching each other, 
the other pair, he's separated. So one pair leans on each other, the other is dissonant. He said, point and line are instilled with cosmic meaning, the one leading to all, the all reducible to one. And Sher Tao had similarly said, first delineate the one, then all things can be distinguished. So the contemporary Chinese painter, Wang Hui Qing, also uses lines and dots to make philosophical statements. He named the artwork pictured behind him, one generates 10,000. In that work, his brushstrokes are assembled pieces from antique furniture fragments affixed onto canvas. The work on the right is an oil painting. The spirited lines, the shorter in white, the longer in black, are credited with walking, as his title suggests. We notice small feet on some of these irregular lines, and though they are painted, they had the feeling of having been cut with scissors. Though separated, the legs and arms swing to some rhythm. And this is one of Wang Hui Qing's largest works and one of his masterpieces. It is a in a triptych format, meaning three parts, which is an allusion to the altar pieces in the European tradition. Only instead of Christian subject matter, we have lines, dots, and rocks on a luminous gold background. The title, Gold Stone Split Open, refers to a story from the Han Dynasty of a general who shot his arrow into what he thought was a sleeping tiger. On closer inspection, he realized that it was a boulder and his arrow had shot clean through it. So amazed, he backed up and he tried several more arrows, but, but they could not pierce the rock. So the moral of the story is that only an arrow shot with sincerity could split the boulder. So here in Wong's painting, we see the force of sincerity moving the fragments through the air, and we have the feeling of a cosmic atmosphere. Indeed, Wong has said, without a spiritual feeling, I dare not start my work. Now back to Sher Tao's painting. So this album leaf conveys something central to his one-stroke theory that the natural world and the human world relate closely to each other. He shows this visually by making the human figure and the mountain peaks triangular shape echo each other. The figure leans to the right as does the tree trunk. Its branches encircle the figure in a kind of embrace. And in the inscription, Shirtal writes, deep in the morning mist, a mountain peak can be seen. Leaning on the railing, I feel the cold dew on my coat and hat. So the mention of that sensation on the skin, the cold dew, awakens our own memory of being outdoors in the early morning. And here we have a riverbank lined with peach blossoms. And Shirtao quotes a Tang Dynasty poem by Li Bai. The riverbanks are lined with peach blossoms rising like a brocaded wave. Here, these multicolored dots may remind us of French Impressionism or pointillism. They form a shimmering veil, partially obscuring the two boats whose sails are just visible. Now, this watercolor by Li Yufan reminded me of Chertal's multicolored dots and their effervescent quality. And Lee has said, a point filled with mental energy sends vibrations. This can lead people to silence and cause people to breathe infinity. Now this is an important image by Shirtao in the Cleveland Museum of Art. So Shirtao's birth name was Zhu Ruoji, but he mostly went by other names, including Shirtao, which literally means stone wave. Now this painting seems to be a kind of stone wave. The mountain peak looks like a white cap with the foam folding over. 
the figure looks up at it as if communicating with it. The inscription on the painting speaks of his quest to locate the last plum blossoms of the season, none of which appear visible in this image. In his treatise, Schertau had said, I know from my own perceptions that mountains are oceans and oceans are mountains, and they seem to understand that I have perceived this about them. So I, I think that that puzzling statement about oceans being mountains and vice versa makes more sense after seeing this image of a wave-like mountain. So in summary, Schertau's treatise on painting attributes artists with the power to create a universe in miniature. The first stroke of the painter's brush leads to a spiritual unity with mountains, water, air, bamboo, blossoms, and trees. And Schertau's Hua Yu Lu, his remarks on painting, gives voice to fundamental beliefs in Chinese philosophy, particularly Taoism. Now, both Li Yufan and Wang Hui Qing build on concepts from ink painting to infuse lines and brush marks with a spiritual importance. Their brushstrokes cut through the noise of industrial society to engage the viewer in the life and luster of nature and to encourage sincerity and silence. Now, Schertau's one-stroke philosophy, you know, what is unique about it? Well, the artist's first mark, this is very resonant gesture, initiates a fusion with nature in its most animated aspect. Schertau's theory credits artists with the power to initiate a cosmic atmosphere, which is refreshing for both painter and viewer. And I put here a detail from Michelangelo's creation of Adam from the Sistine Chapel to leave you with a question. How is Schertau's one-stroke theory distinct from notions of creation or creativity in the Western tradition. And I've placed here some of the sources that I used in my study for today's presentation. Uh, some of these scholars uh, have, uh, really have focused and made large contributions to the scholarship on Schertau. So James K. Hill, Joe Rushi, Earl Coleman, Richard Edwards, Marilyn and Shun Fu, Jonathan Hay has, has written a very substantive uh, study of Schertau and his life. Richard Strasberg, I mentioned as a really good translation. Wen Fong has written beautifully on Schertau's album. And uh, Joseph Shire Dolberg has uh, created some wonderful videos uh, about the uh, returning home album series at the Metropolitan Museum. And on Li Yufan, I really admire Alexandra Monroe's catalog on the 2011 Guggenheim Museum called Marking Infinity. And then on Wang Hui Qing, there are many um, beautiful catalogs, but I made special use of one to all the Taipei, Taipei Fine Arts Museum show, and then the more recent show from the Seattle Art Museum. And then for a video of an interview I did of Wang Wai Qing in China in 2016, I would uh, I refer you to the website called the Art History Public Initiative, arthistorypi.org. And on the page for my book called The Art of Resistance, that was uh, published in 2017, uh, there are a, a series of videos, free videos, and one of them is an interview with Wang Wai Qing. So, uh, and if I'd, I'd love to have your feedback, uh, my email address is, is right there. Thank you very much for listening.